apply it to our lives today. Be with Pastor Rick as he gives it, Lord Jesus. Direct him, Lord God, to the correct words to say, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, and, and put that hope Thank in us all once again, Lord Jesus, that you will persevere. Yes. We will persevere through your power in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I fail. 
I've been listening to um, a lot of music this week. Um, I just, a lot of times when I'm driving to and from to work, I just turn everything off. But this week I, um, I went ahead and started listening to music because I know we're gonna, there's coming a time where we're coming back together and we gotta, we gotta get some stuff going on. And the youth have done this song a couple times, but it just, it just was like it was magnified in my mind what we're going through right now, something we've never gone through before. And I thought back to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and what they're going through or what they went through. They had never gone through that before. But in the midst of everything that was happening, their government was telling them to do something. And they decided to do what God told them to do because it went against what God told them to do. We do what the government says as long as it doesn't go against what, what God tells us to do. But Shadrach... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego went into the fire. But when they went into the fire, there was another one with them. And they were not touched. They were not burned. They were not even cinched. And Pastor, you said it this morning. They didn't even smell like fire. They didn't smell like smoke at all because there was another in the fire. So we're going to do this song this morning, and um, Tucker's going to lead it. And I want you to just... Put your head in the, in the place where it says that there is someone with you walking through this no matter what's going on in your life. And he will keep you from even smelling like the smoke. There's a grace when the heart is on the fire. Hallelujah. Another way when the walls are closing in. Thank you, Lord. When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding, of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Where another died for me There is another in the fire Oh, there is another in the fire Oh, all my dead left for dead beneath the Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to my sin. That's right. No longer a slave. Should I fall in the space between my and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There was another reason. Should I ever need reminding what power set me free? There is a grace that holds no body, and now this power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Is 
there's another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding what power set me free there is a grave that holds nobody and now that power lives in me there is another there is another in the fire standing next to me there is another in the waters holding back the seas and should i ever need reminding how good you've been to me i count the joy that comes every battle because i know that's where you'll be there is another in the fire oh there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire.
Thank you for taking our sin on your on the cross, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wow, that's awesome, Pat. Amen. Isn't there a good spirit today? I mean, yeah. I just feel the presence of God today. It's just it's really awesome. Um, I'm so thankful Thank for, for what God's doing. Because, I, I, man, I'm just excited. But we have a job to do yeah. as a church. Yeah. I mean, you know, we can't, get in, we can't let anything get in the way of what we're supposed to do. Today... Uh, I'll give you a title that way. Carrington knows what's the, what to type on YouTube and everything, you know, because she's like, "Rick, what's the title?" So, so uh, the title today is "A Disciple Is," and we can put three dots behind it or whatever. "A Disciple Is," um, you know, that's that's the title today. That's what we'll be talking about. Um, what a disciple is today, because I I, I want to remind us as a, as a body of believers, as the church of the living Lord Jesus Christ, of uh, what we're supposed to do. I. I don't know about y'all, but if I go to a fast food place and they get my order wrong, I get upset. Anybody get irate? You don't get the right stuff. So the other night, I'm bringing Gina home from, from Rex after her um, surgery, and I stop at Highway 42 at Bojangles there because Bojangles, that's um, the only place I usually go. <laughs> <laughs> they got the best grease around. I mean, I love that stuff. But anyways, I always go get a chicken biscuit and some fries, you know, and, and, a, and a tea. And so Gina gets her little sandwich that she gets. She orders a, a chicken sandwich, but it's got to just have cheese on it and, um, and, and a bun with the sesame seeds and nothing else. It's got to be, you know, I mean, it's, that's how it's got to be. It's okay, Pat. You don't have to eat it. Gina loves them. So, so anyway, so, so, so she gets her little thing, and, and, and so we, we're going through the drive through Now, remember, you're going through drive throughs now. You don't get to go in and order or whatever. So they, they, I pay. They stick the bag out the window. I pull up 20 feet, and Gina said, ah, this isn't even our order. I said, what do you mean this isn't our order? She said, look what's in here. She said, there is a plain biscuit, a thing of macaroni and cheese, <laughs> and a chicken sandwich of some, like a club or something. And she's like, this isn't ours, right? So, of course, we went back through, and it says they were open for, for um, uh, takeouts, but the doors were all locked. But we went up there anyways, and so he takes our bag, and, and we tell him what we're supposed to get because what our order was, you know, was, was a, a chicken biscuit and some fries and whatever. So, so we get, he says, I'll go fix it. So he takes it in, and he fixes the order, he comes out with this big old bag. And I'm like, what in the world? We didn't order a tailgate. You know, we just ordered. He said, oh, I'm giving you other food, too, because we've just thrown that away. So, so actually, you know, God's so good to you. <laughs> we got like two sets of meals that we got to take home, right? That's a win-win. It's a win-win, right? So the favor of God going before me and my wife as we're going home. I, I love it. But here's the thing. I was so mad when they didn't put the right food in there. I didn't, they didn't follow the order. All, it's real simple. I'm going to tell you exactly what I want. I want a, I want a chicken biscuit. I want fries. I want, a, I want one of these crazy sandwiches my wife orders. That's all I want. You know, that's what I want. Well, think about what Jesus, think about what he thinks every time that we don't do what he's asked us to do. I'm not talking about sinful things. I'm not talking about anything. But what I am talking about is what he told us to do. There's something called the Great Commission, although a lot of times it might be the Great Omission because people tend to not like doing that part. Um, Matthew chapter 28, starting in uh, verse 18, or we can start in verse 16 or whatever. I can read the word to you this morning. Matthew 28. And you say, well, I've heard this before. I've got this memorized. Okay, well, you got it. you've heard it before. You've got it memorized. Um, take it to heart. It says, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee. Notice there's only 11 because one of them fell away. Um, the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. So even the ones that walked with Jesus Christ saw all these things, they were still doubting. I mean, and that's so, so when you have doubts, y'all, when you have doubts, it's okay. You're going to doubt. That's, that's, that's part of walking as a Christian. You're going to doubt. You don't, you're not going to have perfect faith all the time. There's times where you're going to doubt. There's times you're going to wonder. There's times when all those are going to come in. Don't let that shipwreck your faith. Just keep going. Keep running. Keep, keep trucking. It says in verse 18, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, 
All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So Jesus has all authority in heaven and on earth. All authority has been given to him. So what's he tell us? What's his order? If he was going through the drive through of the church and he was going to say, here's my order. This is what I want. You know, and remember, and then they're going to have to repeat it back to him, right? Because that's what, that's what they do at the drive through They usually repeat the order back to you. He says in verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. And I can hear him on the drive-thru. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one set of disciples from the world uh, to go. Uh, would you like a, a sweet tea with that? I mean, you know, I can just, I, I mean, I know I'm making fun of this, but, but y'all, he only asked us to do one thing. This is it. This is it. Go out and make disciples of all the nations. That's, 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 the, that's all he asked us to do. Um, make disciples. And so maybe, maybe we need to start. I feel like sometimes this, is, this whole COVID thing has been like a, a, a line in the sand or, or a restart or a, you know, a redo or a reboot or whatever you want to call it. Shut down, you know, restart, let's go. Let's, let's do what God told us to do. Okay, let's quit doing all this other stuff and let's start doing what Jesus said, not what everybody else says you need to do. Making disciples is what Jesus Christ said the church is supposed to do. He's, given, he's been given all authority in heaven and earth, and he said, look, you need to go make disciples of all the nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things I've commanded you. And know this, that while you're doing all this, the promise is this, while you are making disciples, lo, I am with you always okay if you want to make sure that you got jesus with you then do what he tells you and that's make disciples go and do that okay so we need to ask ourselves this and, and i want you to answer the question the um the um sermon title was a disciple is well can you answer that question because maybe we need to know what we're aiming for first and before we can we can find what it is that we're supposed to be making maybe we need to go through and i think i've got let me see i, I put down five things or no i'm sorry Six things. Six things that I've got here for a, a disciple, a mark, mark of a disciple. Who, who is a disciple? And so I, I want us to, to look at that this morning. So if you are taking notes, this is one of those sermons where you can actually take notes from Rick Kelly. Normally I'm all over the place. I'm scattered. I'm running around. I'm, I'm trying to, to impart uh, teaching this morning, wisdom to you so you understand. First thing, a disciple is a believer in Jesus Christ. I mean, that's the first thing. Look, you can't be a disciple if you're not a believer, okay? You've got to be a believer. I mean, and the Philippian jailer, I mean, he's so, it's so awesome. I mean, you know, Paul and Silas, they're, they're in, the, in the jail. They're, 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 they're being beat. They've been beaten. They're, they're, they're in there. They're singing. An earthquake comes. The whole place is falling down. And the jailer, you know, he comes to me, asks him, what must I do to be saved? I mean, what must I do to be saved? And that's that question that everybody asks. And, and then so what do they tell him? Paul says, look, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. You will be saved, you and your household. But you've got to be a believer in order to be a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ. You've got to take that first step, be a believer right believe you know receive jesus christ as your as your savior so i'm not i'm not um i'm not saying that 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 making a decision for christ is not important it's absolutely vital you got to take it there's got to be a point in your life somewhere where you decided hey you know what i'm going to follow jesus christ i'm going to believe that he's the savior of the world i'm going to believe everything they say about him and i'm going to turn my life over to him so so you've made a decision for jesus christ but understand that jesus is not asking in the great commission he says doesn't say go therefore and have people make decisions for jesus christ They'll go therefore and get some folks to come to the altar and make decisions. He says, I want disciples, not decisions. I want disciples. I want followers. I want people that are really going to follow me. So a disciple is a believer in Jesus Christ. we got to make sure we do that. The second thing that a disciple is, is a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. Look, don't just lip service to Jesus. You've actually got to follow him. His disciples walked around with him for like three years. Everywhere they went, they ate together, they walked together, they talked. They, they lived life together for three years. They followed Jesus Christ watching him. Now, I want you to see what it takes to be a follower. Because, see, it actually costs something. We, we many times preach a very cheap grace in the church. 
I mean, we just, we just kind of be like, well, just, you know, close your eyes, raise your hand, do something, you know, fill out a card. Um, okay, now you're saved. You're good. You got fire insurance. You're not going to burn the, the end. But that's not being a follower of Jesus Christ. How do I become a follower? Well, let's look at Matthew chapter 16. I think 24 and 25 is what I've got here um, marked on my notes. It says this. Then Jesus said to his disciples... And I want you to notice, he doesn't call them, he calls them disciples, followers, the people that were following him, living with him. If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. That is a follower. We as followers of Jesus Christ, have to deny ourselves, okay? And see, right now the world is so opinionated. Right now the world is so split. Um, you got very liberal views on one side. On the left, you have very conservative views. On the other side, on the right, everybody has their opinions. And we stand and we shout across the divide. Whether you're liberal or conservative, we shout at each other. We, we scream and we yell at each other. You're wrong. No, 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 you're wrong. And everything is always about that. But we, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, we've got to represent Jesus. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus didn't come to divide all this stuff up. He came to, to bring us together in Him. And see, we've got to understand that, that we're supposed to be together. Don't value your opinion over people. Okay? If you are so uh, set on your opinion that you're going to rip and rear and you're going to cast out all these people, how many have you pushed away from Jesus? Because of your opinion. Okay? We have to be able to deny ourselves, take up the cross, and follow Him. Because He says, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I found that as being a pastor, there are many times, many, 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 many times that I have to keep my mouth shut because my opinion doesn't matter. The Word of God matters. Jesus Christ matters. The Holy Spirit of God matters. All those things matter. But Rick Kelly's opinion does not matter. It doesn't matter what I think about things. It matters what the Word of God says about things. That's what matters, okay? The Word says that we're supposed to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. Wherever He goes, look, and He's going to call you to some places that maybe you didn't think you needed to be there or you shouldn't have been there. He's going to call you to people that you're going to be like, oh, that's the scum of the earth. And Jesus is going to say, yes, and that's the very one that I need you to go to and tell them about me. Tell them that they can be delivered. Tell them they can be set free. Tell them that there is more than what you see in this world. Tell them that. That's a follower of Jesus Christ. We'll go a step further, number three. So, so number one, a disciple is a believer, believer in Jesus Christ. Number two, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. Number three, a disciple is a student of the Word of God. Look, you've got to open up this Word and read it and take it in. He gave us this Word for a reason. We're not just to carry it around with us as like a, like, you know, a, a little, little metal or something that we just, oh, I got my Word today. No, you need to get your Word, open up your Word, and put your Word in your heart and hide it away because you're going to need to live by that Word. You've got to be a student of the Word. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. I do have some Scripture in here someplace. This isn't my opinion. This is what the Word of God says. John um, chapter 8. Verses 31 and 32 says this. He says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, okay? So those who believed him, he said, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So if you abide in the word of God, and you know the truth, the truth's going to set you free but you will be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus was the Word. 
Amen. I mean, that's that's the first part of John, that he was the logos. He was the living word of God. He is the word of God. That, and, and so anything in this in this Bible, it's only going to point you to Jesus Christ. It's not going to bring you away from Jesus. It's going to point you to him. And the more of the word you get in you, the more you're going to be able to understand who Jesus Christ is in your life and be able to follow him better. It's going to be a, a better walk with Christ. So you're going you're to have to be a, a student of the word of God. And there's so much stuff in there that people say is in there. It's not in there. It's not in there. I mean, folks have all these like wives' tales and things that they've heard or whatever that, oh, well, somebody said this and somebody said that, and, and, and it's not there. But there is enough in there to where you can absolutely read the Word of God, know who Jesus Christ is, know that He's the Savior of the world, be able to turn your life over to Him and be guided in your life through the Word of God. We, every day, we should be able, we should be checking some things, you know. If we don't know what to do, we need to open up the Word and let the Word speak to us because it was the Holy Spirit of God that inspired the Word of God. And so every time that we open up the Word of God and we read it, we're releasing the Holy Spirit of God in our lives for wisdom. A disciple's got to be a student of the Word. So we got three things. A disciple is a believer in Jesus Christ. A disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. A disciple is a student of the Word of God. So you need to get that Bible out, dust it off, and start opening it up and start reading and studying it and looking through it and allowing God. And, and, and let me tell you something about the Word of God. This Word will make no sense to you if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. So, so if you're reading it and you're like, man, this makes no sense to me, are you, are you a believer? Because remember, that was step one. Step one was, was get saved. Step one was, was trust Jesus Christ with your life. Step one was allowing him. Because see, what happens is, is when we trust Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, something else takes place. I mean, we are justified, right? We're slid from, from, from guilty over to innocent because we are covered by the blood of the Lamb. But there's something else that takes place. The Holy Spirit of God dwells in us. And through the Spirit, we have the truth of God. And the truth is revealed through the Word of God. And it can, you can only understand it when you have the Spirit of God in you. So you got to know that. So if it's not making sense, maybe you need to go back to step one. Do you know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior? Step two, have you denied yourself and took up your cross? Step three, are you a student of the Word of God? Okay. So we got three steps so far. We're, we're doing three steps. Um, step four. A disciple is a witness. All right. Now you say, well, what do you mean here? What do you mean here, Rick? Well, let me, let me tell you something about being a disciple. You've got to tell people why you follow Jesus Christ. People may just think you're crazy. I mean, they may not know why you do what you do. 1 Peter 3.15 tells us this, and I, and I reference all this to the Word of God because, see, I'm not going to... It's what I stand on. I stand on the Word of God. I mean, you know, look, it's not my opinion. This is not opinion. This is, this is God's Word. So, so let's see what it says here about a, a disciple being a witness. In 1 Peter 3.15, it says this, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always, can we say that? Always, 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 always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So as I read that, I, I want to I remind you that as a believer, as a disciple of Jesus Christ, you are to be a witness to everyone around you that when someone asks you, why do you follow Jesus Christ? Why did you get saved? Why are you a believer? That you'll be able to tell them and give them a defense for the reason why you believe what you believe. And people are going to ask you, and I'm here to tell you that your testimony is probably the most powerful weapon you have to bringing people into the kingdom of God. Because you tell them, look, this is what happened with me. You know, I was all jacked up. My world was in a mess. Everything was going on. And you know what? I decided one day that I was going to trust Jesus Christ. Or I talked to someone one day, and they told me, you know what? All the stuff that you're dealing with right now, I used to deal with that. But now that I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, He has set me free. He set me free from all that. I don't struggle with that anymore. I don't battle against that anymore because God saved me. He set me free. He set me aside. He sanctified me. He filled me with His Holy Spirit. And I'm able to battle against the things of the flesh. Because see, every one of us, I'm here to tell you that you are stuck in flesh. You are wrapped up in flesh, okay? We are a spiritual being wrapped in this nasty old flesh that gets us in trouble. 
There's going to come a day where we're going to be released from the flesh. We are going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye or at, at the grave or whatever it is. But we will be changed. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going in this body. You're going in a resurrection body. So you'll be set free. The flesh gets you in trouble. Jesus sets us free. But you need to be able to give a defense to everyone who asks you. A reason for the hope that is in you. And notice this. With meekness and fear. Man, that tells me that what I'm saying, first of all, I need to be respectful of the people that I'm telling it to. Because I'm here to tell you, you know how you can get somebody to quit, quit listening to you the fastest way you can do it? Insult them. Make sure you insult them first, and I promise you that you will just, you'll be so effective then. You know, just make them mad. Make them mad. Because see, as soon as I get mad, you know what happens? I, I'm done. Done listening to you. I'm mad. You can't make people mad when you're trying to witness to them. You can't tell them, look, you're going to burn, burn, you're going to hell, you're going to hell. You know, that's really good, effective street preaching. We just need to stand out there. Every one of you, if you don't know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell, and 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 you're going to hell. Going to hell. That's effective. No, it's not effective. It's not effective. Meekness. And fear. Fear? Why fear? Because their life may be laying in the balance, depending on what you say. <laughs> Amen? Amen? They, they may have decided that morning that they were going to kill themselves. And unless somebody spoke a word over there in such a way to where they felt like they had some value in their life, to where they're like, look, you know what? I am ready to kill myself. And the only, you know, but I'll tell you what, God, I don't know if I believe in you or not, but I'll tell you what, God, if you're, if you're God and if you're real, then what you need to do is you need to set somebody in front of me that can give me a reason to stay in this world. You may be that reason. You may be the one that they, God sent them to you. So when you start witnessing the people, do it with meekness and with fear, knowing that a life is hanging in the balance. So I think we got four points here today. Let me see. We got one point. Disciple is a believer in Jesus Christ. The second thing, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. The third thing, a disciple is a student of the Word of God. And the fourth, a disciple is a witness now I want to go, and you guys are going to fight me on this one, maybe, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to listen to your fight because I'm 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 going to go to the Word of God, <laughs> because because I'm just going to go what the Bible says. The fifth thing that a disciple needs to be is a disciple is baptized. You say, <gasps> but the thief on the cross, if it wasn't raining or something, he didn't he didn't get baptized. Well, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about being a disciple. Remember, I'm not talking about a decision. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Why is this important? It's not important for salvation. It's important for the testimony. It's important for being a witness. It's important to understand that, that we're not looking for decisions for Christ. We're looking to make disciples when Paul or when Peter preached in Acts chapter 2. Let's look at Acts chapter 2 for a second. I know I've flipped around a little bit today, but, but it's okay. Acts chapter 2. Let me see. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 38. So when Peter was preaching this incredible sermon after Pentecost had taken place, after the Spirit had fallen on the 120 in the upper room, after all those things had taken place, tongues of fire on everybody, this awesome, awesome outpouring of the Spirit, Peter tells them this in verse 38. Peter says to them, repent, repent. Repent. So that means not just stop doing what you're doing, but turn away from your sin, run from it, go completely the other way. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all or far off as many as the Lord our God will call. Well, so we're supposed to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Look, I'm here to tell you that, that we need the Spirit of God living in us to be able to live this life out. You cannot live as a disciple of Jesus Christ without having the Holy Spirit living in you. He's got to be there. He's got to be living. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are not His. And all this I'm telling you is not, this is not foreign. This is not new. This is right out of the Word of God. It's, it's there. So we need to understand that that those that were there that day, they, they, 
they got received all that um, wisdom from 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 uh, Peter. But also, let's go let's go forward a little bit more here in, in this. It talks about other things. In verse forty, it says, "And with many other words he testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation.' I'm here to tell you. When I read that yesterday, I was like, Be saved from this perverse generation, man. If we've ever been in a perverse generation, it's 2020. We are in the midst of a perverse generation. We are in the midst of a perverse world. We are in the midst of all this. He says, Look, be saved from this perverse generation." Now, 41, then those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. I mean, I, I want you to understand something. That if you're gladly receiving the word of God, if you're gladly receiving that and you consider yourself a disciple of Jesus Christ, then what you need to make sure you do is get baptized. Amen. Because see, that is that's you standing in front of the world because you're going to be a disciple, right? You're not going to be undercover. You can't be undercover and be a disciple. Remember, because an under a disciple is a witness. A witness is someone who stands in front of people, and, and when they ask them, "Why do you believe in Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior?" and you tell them, "You can't be an undercover Christian. I'm sorry, you can't do it. You can't do it." Sooner or later, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you've got to witness for Him wherever you're at. And it doesn't mean you're standing behind a pulpit. It doesn't mean you're standing on a street corner. Witness takes place in our lives. It takes place between husbands and wives. It takes place between fathers and mothers and children and grandchildren and the people you work with and the people you surround yourself with. And everywhere you are, you have opportunities to witness to people about Jesus Christ. Remember who you represent. We are ambassadors for Christ and we preach His message not ours we preach his message through our testimony to everyone around us it's important that we stand before our brothers and sisters in christ and and here's the whole thing about baptism you say well what's it's just a, it's just symbolic it, yes it's absolutely symbolic but it's so important because see what you're saying is you're saying i have received jesus christ as my lord and savior i just didn't make a decision but i've decided to be a disciple and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to live this life as hard as i can for him because i know that that it's a tough world and I know that it's a perverse generation that I live in but when they take you and they put you under that water that's sig signifying you dying to yourself that's signifying you taking up the cross of Jesus Christ that when you come up out of the water you are alive as a new creation in Christ fully different, fully something else and, and that's why we do that and, and so if you're running around and you're, and you're a follower of Jesus Christ you've not been baptized I'm telling you, go get baptized Get baptized. It's important that you're, that you're all the way in. You can't be part of the way in. Be all the way in. Be all the way in. Some of these things, yes, they are symbolic, they're, they're, but, but it's important that the world see and know who you are in Christ. So I tell you, get baptized. Amen. It said those who gladly received his word were baptized. 3,000 souls. That I want you to think about that. Wow. 3,000 people one day baptized. And they had some water someplace. That's all I know. 3,000 in one day. Okay, so I've gotten through five. Gotten through five. So I've got the last one. Here's the last one for you today. Let me, let me recap just to make sure I'm going to be a good preacher and, and give you all the points again. Point one, a disciple is a believer in Jesus Christ. Point two, a disciple is a follower of Jesus Christ. Point three, a disciple is a student of the word of God. Point four, a disciple is a witness. Point five, a disciple is baptized. And point six, and this is the most important part. Point six, a disciple is a reproducer of disciples. <gasps> well, I was with you, Rick, on the first five. A disciple is a reproducer of the disciples. John 15, 8 says this, By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Um, you know, God is glorified that we bear fruit. What kind of fruit are we supposed to be bearing? We're supposed to be bringing people with us. 
Amen. We're supposed to be bringing people with us, church. This is that's what this walk is about. See, we're supposed to be reproducing. We're supposed to be making more of us. There should be no problem with the churches. The churches should be packed out. The churches should be full of disciples. We are all in contact with people every single day. We're in contact with people that need Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And it's up to us. It's not up to the preacher. It's not up to the music minister. It's not up to the youth pastor. It's not up to the deacons. It's not up to any of those, the Sunday school teachers. It is not up to them to make the disciples because we can't disciple but just a few people. It's up to the church, the body of believers. They are the ones that are supposed to be disciples. They're the ones that are supposed to be bringing. If your church is empty, it's not your pastor's fault. It's not your. It's not Pat's fault. It's not Joey's fault. It's not because we don't have enough programs. It's not because they... It's because you're a terrible disciple. Ooh, did I say that? I did say that. I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, you know, I, I hate it. This is one of them times where that the blade cuts deep to the joint, the marrow, and you know, sinew and all that. But let's go back to where we started. I mean, he said we're we're just there. We're only here to make disciples. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. I mean, maybe we should just remember this. Everybody says, Well, what's the what's the mission statement of our church? <laughs> okay. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the mission statement of the church. Anything else that we are doing, it, unless it goes directly to this, unless we are making disciples by what we're doing in this church, we are wasting our time and wasting God's time. Wasting his resources. We're not being good stewards if we're not making sure we're making disciples. But discipleship is something that takes place in the midst of our little communities that we live in. See, everybody says right now, well, we can't make disciples because the church can't meet. Hogwash. You should be making more disciples right now because I guarantee that you are locked down in your family unit right now. You're locked down. You only have the people that are the closest people in your life are around you right now. Then you should be discipling those people that are right around you right now. Your children, your grandchildren, your, your sons, your daughters, all of those in your family. The people you work with. Some of you are considered essential. you got to go to work every day. There's a group of people in that, that workplace that you talk to all the time, that you're friends with, that they trust you, that they love you, that they know you. And if you tell them about Jesus, they're going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to a stranger. They're not going to listen to somebody just coming up to them, uh, trying to beat them over the head. But they will listen to you because they trust you. They love you. They know your character. They know who you are. We could be discipling in a way right now. Look, the church, it's not, it's not been shut down. It has been deployed. God has tried to deploy us into our homes. It's time for us as the mothers and fathers and grandparents to start teaching our children the admonition, raise them up in the admonition of the Lord. Train them in the ways of God. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Tell them how important everything is. Tell them all that because that's what a disciple is. A disciple is a person that has sold out to Jesus that everything they do in their life, their number one goal is to make sure that they take as many as they can with them into the kingdom. Because hallelujah, there's going to come a day, y'all. I, I am so, I'm so, so, so sure of this. There will be a rapture. Hallelujah. God is going to come and get his church. And I don't know when. It is imminent. Eminent in the kingdom of God means that it can happen anytime. There's nothing waiting. There's no, there's no timetable. It's not like it's got to be this time or that time. Any time. He could come and get us right now. We could leave right this second. Because it's imminent. It's imminent, imminent, imminent. Are your family where they need to be? Have you spoken to them about Jesus? I'm not talking about browbeating. I'm not talking about beating people up and making them mad. I'm talking about sharing the love of Christ with them. People want to be loved. They want to feel important, but you've got to give them the truth. You've got to give them what they need. In this time right now, there's people that are scared to death. They're scared of this virus. And I'm here to tell you it's not a nice virus. However, you got nothing to be afraid of. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior, hallelujah, when you leave this world, you're going to be in the presence of God. We're going to leave out of here, and we are going to be in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm not worried about it. God is going to take me out of this world one way or the other. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. Don't live in fear. Live as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Church, I'm telling you, we have got to do, we got to do the job. 
The mark of a disciple is disciple making. <laughs> Are you leading people to the Lord? I mean, you know, and in a way, not just not just getting a decision out of them, but getting their life out of them, getting them to to, to tune in, getting them to, uh, to 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 give themselves to Christ, uh, and showing them what what the marks of a disciple are. So I ask you today: Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Not just, not just a believer, not someone that filled out a card one time um, in the back of a pew or a seat that said, uh, would you like to make a decision for Jesus Christ? Say, check. Okay, and then you put it in the thing and that was it. No, I'm not talking about checking boxes. I'm talking about checking your life in to the Savior. I'm talking about, about giving Him everything you got. And, and, and if you are a disciple of Jesus Christ, then you need to be a believer. Okay, you need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You need to be a follower that everywhere that Jesus goes, you need to be following him. You need to be following in his footsteps. You need to be representing the most high God. Hallelujah. Don't misrepresent Jesus in this world. Be a student of the word. Open up the word of God and allow the word of God. Not only do you read the word of God, but the word of God reads you. Amen. And, and, and use it as a mirror. If you want to know, am I measuring up? Read the word. The word will tell you if you're measuring up or not. Be a witness. Everywhere you go, look, you're a witness everywhere you go, whether you realize it or not. A good witness or a bad witness, but you are a witness nonetheless. I always have to check myself because I, too, have opinions. I, too, get angry. I, too, have a mouth. And there's times where I, I say things that I probably shouldn't say. And I have to allow the Spirit of God. There's times where, where God truly um, convicts me and corrects me over things I say and I've got to go back and repent be a witness are you baptized have you made a public profession of your faith and commitment to Jesus Christ when people come up and ask you if you're a believer do you tell them yeah I'm a believer absolutely I love the Lord Jesus Christ he's my Lord and Savior um, do, do you tell them that or do you be like well you know I, I, just kinda, I go to church once in a while but I'm just not well then you're really not a disciple you're someone that associates with the church and the sixth thing, are you a reproducer? Are you making disciples? You say, man, Rick, that's tough. Gosh, that's tough. Joey, is that tough? Pat, is that tough? It's very tough for me because I, I, I was the one that had, I spoke this, but I'm telling you, this is, this is every one of us, you know, we all, we all like to do this, point fingers. But remember, if you got one out, three coming back at you. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm just as guilty as the next one on some of these things. Uh, you know, it's tall order. But it is possible through the power of the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. See, that was the thing that Jesus said. Jesus said, I got to leave you, but I'm going to send you the comforter. I'm going to send you the paraclete. I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, the one that's going to come alongside you. He is going to speak all truth to you. And He is going to lead you. He's going to guide you. He's going to direct you in this thing that I'm calling you to do, which is to be a disciple with the Holy Spirit. So let's go ahead. Pat, we're just going to close on this, I think, this morning, um, on, this, on this word. But I, I, I want to I close with this this morning. I want to ask you, you know, are you a disciple? If somebody came up to you and said, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? What would your answer be? I hope we would answer, yes, I am a disciple. I'm a believer. I'm a follower. I'm a student of the word. I'm a witness. I'm baptized. Hallelujah. I am reproducing disciples everywhere that I go. And, and, and I challenge you today. I know some of you listening to this right now on, on the live stream. Maybe you're not even believers. Maybe you just, you like this because you like to listen to the music at the beginning of the service. Or, or maybe you, you like to, you know, you like the way that I preach, but you're not really crazy about the message maybe. But you, you tune in anyways. And, you know, maybe, maybe you just didn't have anything better to do today. And this thing popped up on your timeline and you, you just opened it up. Well, I'm here to tell you today that it didn't open up by accident. That's right. This is not an accident. Okay, so you're hearing the word being preached to you this morning. And what's the word say? The word says the first thing you need to do is be a believer. Just like that old Philippian jailer. He said, what must I do to be saved? I feel the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit right now. I pray that you feel him right now at home as you, as you watch me or when this is replayed again. I, I pray that you, you feel his power and his presence. And, and maybe, maybe you're asking that question right now. What must I do to be saved? I'm here to tell you what you need to do you need to trust the Lord Jesus Christ repent repent from the look 
I'm not telling you anything you don't know. If you're, if you're bound up in sin right now, and if, you're, if your life is jacked up in a mess, I, the preacher doesn't have to tell you your life is jacked up and it's a mess. You know that. And there's a reason why you're hearing me bring this gospel message right now. It's because God knows your life's jacked up too. And you need Jesus today. And today might be that day. Today's your day of visitation. Hallelujah. That, that your heart is tender enough. Remember, He gives us enough grace to be able to believe. So I, so I pray today that as you listen to me, that if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, that you allow Him to save your soul today. And that's going to open up a whole bunch of stuff in your life. I mean, it's going to open up a whole bunch of stuff. So you're going to make a decision for Jesus Christ today, but then that decision, there's things that are going to follow that. You're going to have to start following Jesus Christ. You're going to have to start studying the Word of God. Plug yourself into a church somewhere and, and, and be a witness to people around you and say, man, I don't understand all of it. You don't have to have all the answers, but what you have to do is know who the answer is and His name's Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you've done that, get baptized make a public profession of your faith of what Jesus Christ did for you there's somebody out there watching right now that's just waiting for you to make that step and then they're like well gosh if my friend did it well then then there's got to be something to this they wouldn't do something like that and and then it's gonna there's gonna be a ripple effect in your life and guess what you've already done now you're a reproducer and you're reproducing disciples and believers around you it's a tall order y'all but it's possible through the power of the indwelling spirit so I'm just going to close out with prayer this morning Father God you, you gave us you gave us one thing to do Lord when you left Jesus you just said just go make disciples make them in all the world everywhere you go anywhere there's people make disciples hallelujah Lord and God I thank you for that Lord that, that you didn't constrain us to a place or anything you didn't say well just make them in, in Jerusalem you know or Judea or Samaria but you said look go to the ends of the world Go everywhere. If there's people there, they need to hear about me. And so, Father, I pray, God, I pray first of all, Lord, for those that don't know you this morning, God, I pray that, that maybe today might be that day where they decide to make that decision to follow you. But, Lord, that it not just be an empty decision, but it be a decision to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ, and that they would learn to follow you, God. So, Lord, I, I pray for those today, maybe that are lost, God. Lord, I pray for disciples out there. I pray for those that are believers, that have been believers for a long time, but the fire is burnt down. Lord, where they don't feel like they're useful anymore. And I'm here to tell you today that you are always useful in the kingdom of God. There may be grandparents out there right now that said, my best days are behind me. I can't, I can't disciple anybody. I don't even hardly leave the house. But I'll bet, Lord, that their grandchildren are coming to see them. And God, I pray that that grandparent, that grandmother, that grandfather would start speaking the words of life over their grandchildren and their great-grandchildren, God. Because, Lord, that's where faith comes from, in our, in our group, our circle, God. Lord, that it's each one of us, as we surround ourselves with our husband, our wife, our children, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our nephews, our people that we work with, God. Lord, that we would use every bit of this, God, every bit of it, Lord. Lord, to make disciples in this world, God. Lord, not just people that identify with you, but people that follow you, people that are sold out to you, God. So, Lord, I thank you for that today, God. I thank you for your word. God, you are so good to us, Lord. And, Lord, I know that you are powerful. And I also know this, God, that your word will not return void. And, Lord, that if we will preach your word, if we will stand upon your word, if we will stand upon you, our rock, Lord Jesus, then we will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there will be a return. So, God, I just thank you for that. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you all. We are getting ready. I guess she's shutting me down. Are you shutting me down, Carrington? I'm good? Okay. We're getting ready to go outside. And we're going to have service at 1030. All right, y'all? So, um, so I hope, hope you're on the way here. If you're not, you're on the way. And just remember today, remember that God will give you anything you need. If you don't feel like you are able to do what you need to do, God will equip you with anything. So I just, I just thank him for this opportunity. God bless you all this morning. We love you. And uh, we'll see you later. God bless.